Hello students, this is Dr. A. S. Agil. I welcome you all in the next class on finite element method in civil engineering. In this class, we will solve another numerical example on shape functions for CST element. So the statement of problem is coordinates of nodes of CST element are node number 1 coordinates are 1, 2, node number 2 coordinates are 5, 3 and node number 3 coordinates are 4, 6 which are also shown in the figure. Okay. Now question is not directly to find out the shape functions. Question is at interior point P which is shown in the figure at interior point P if x is equal to 3.3 so x coordinate of any point P is given to you if x equal to 3.3 and value of n1 is equal to 0.3 so value of one shape function is also given to you 0.3 the question is find coordinate of any point P it means y coordinate of that point P and values of remaining two shape functions that is n2 and n3 ok this is the question now solution steps we know that shape functions can be obtained by using relation n is equal to p into a inverse just in previous problem we have seen that where n represent the shape functions p represent the parametric matrix and a represent the connectivity matrix where p is equal to 1 x y three elements from the Pascal triangle that is 1 x y because there are three degrees of freedom in x direction u1 u2 u3 and three, three degrees of freedom in y direction that is v1 v2 v3 so we will select three elements from the Pascal triangle to write down the displacement function and those three elements are written in the matrix form representing the parametric matrix ok now a matrix represents the connectivity matrix so connectivity matrix means we are representing this parametric matrix for the three nodes of triangle ok and this x y represent the coordinates of three nodes of the triangle so for node number one coordinates are 1 2 so if you look at here coordinates of 1 2 or node number one are written here so it is 1 then this x y represent 1 2 similarly same 1 x y if you write down for node number 2 coordinates are 5 3 so it is 1 5 3 and for node number 3 coordinates are 4 6 so it will be 1 4 6 ok so like this you can complete the connectivity matrix so p equal to 1 x y and a is equal to connectivity matrix where this 1 is repeated as it is first element and instead of x y we are putting the coordinates of 3 nodes 1 2 and 3 and inverse of that we know that how to find out inverse of 3 by 3 matrix the method of adjoint is the simplest method to find out the inverse of 3 by 3 matrix so if you find out inverse of that 3 by 3 matrix with the help of method of adjoint it is 1 upon 13 where 13 represent the determinant of that 3 by 3 matrix and this 3 by 3 matrix represent the coefficients of adjoint matrix ok so like this using method of adjoint if you find out the inverse of that 3 by 3 matrix so p n is equal to this p into a inverse so if you multiply this row 1 by 1 with 3 column so 1 into 18 then x into minus 3 it is minus 3x y into minus 1 it is minus y divided by 30 you will get n1 is equal to 18 minus 3x minus y upon 30 Similarly, if you multiply this row with the second column of the inverse matrix, so the second column on this row, you will get N2. Similarly, if you multiply with the third row of, third column of this inverse, you will get N3. So first, find out all three shape functions. Okay. Now look at the given conditions. If you look at this statement of problem again, question is, if X is equal to 3.3, and n1 equal to 0.3 this is the given data and question is to find out the remaining y coordinate of point p and the values of remaining two shape functions n2 n3 so x is equal to 3.3 and n1 equal to 0.3 is given to us right so using that given data first 
at x equal to 3.3 and n1 equal to 0.3. So if you put this n1 equal to 0.3 here and this x is equal to 3.3 here. Okay, so from first n1 j function, if you look at n1 is 0.3 and x is known, so we will be only y is unknown, right? So if you put n1 and x here and you can find out y equal to 4.2. It means now x equal to 3.3 and y equal to 4.2 are the coordinates of any point P. Okay, this is answer for first question. Now second part of the unknown is to find out values of remaining two shear functions. Okay, now we know this x equal to 3.3 and y equal to 4.2. Putting this x and y here in n2 as well as n3, we will get the value of n2 is 0.2 and n3 is equal to 0.5. Okay. From here, we will get one more thing. n1 is given to us 0.3. Okay. n1 is equal to 0.3 and n2 is equal to 0.2, n3 equal to 0.5. We know the property of shape function that sum of shape function is always equal to unity. So n1 plus n2 plus n3 must be equal to 1. So 0.3 plus 0 0.2, 0.5 plus 0 0.5, it is 1. This is to cross check whether your n2 n3 values are correct or not. Okay, like this, like this you can solve the numerical example of shape functions for three-noded CST element. Okay, I hope all of you understand. In the next class, we will solve the next article. We will see the next article on finite element analysis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.